goodness me, this is exciting, isn't it? Um, well, as you can see, I have a spare room, as most of us are working at the moment. Um, I'm very excited to meet you all and uh, to talk today about some bugs. So, first of all, children, then you probably never saw that. Um, I also write books for kids about all sorts of different topics. So, um, from the Oh, this is maybe back to front mirror image. But anyway, this one um, about plastic pollution. Um, I've written a lot of books about bugs. This is my latest one. Um, and I also, I was really small. Um, for me, I mean, I did, I lived um, part of my time at my mum's house where I had dogs and cats and, and chickens and normal animals like that. Um, and part of my time at my dad's house where we had snakes, lizards, um praying mantis millipedes scorpions tarantulas and a lot of these things lived in my bedroom um so i have got to know these creatures really really well um and i oh someone's just said you're an artist i'm not an artist i am a terrible terrible artist actually i'm just really really lucky um, that I have been able to pair with some amazing illustrators um, who've made my books beautiful for me because they would not be beautiful if I wrote if I if I drew the pictures um, yeah like look have, have a look at these gorgeous 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 spreads in this book and actually this one's really beautiful as well um, sorry I'm going a little bit off topic but it's one of the really cool things about writing books is that you you get to work with uh, amazing other creatives and they do things like this look at that isn't that gorgeous and um and this one is illustrated sorry i'm really going off topic but this one is illustrated by um an artist in new zealand called angela and she had to illustrate some habitats that we have here in the uk so things like the scottish highlands and um various heathlands and things like that let me see if i can find them and she'd never been to those places before um so she had to do it all from pictures and she did an absolutely beautiful job so um oh i won't spend all my time looking for oh yeah so the highlands look she did that beautiful image never having been there just from um from pictures amazing that's in this book, How to Help a Hedgehog and Protect a Polar Bear. Anyway, so I had a bit of a weird childhood with all these weird and wonderful animals, and it just made me fall in love with them. Um, and I know lots of people think bugs are a bit creepy, a bit scary. Uh, so my, my mission is to stop people from being so scared of these creatures and to realise how amazing they are. So I thought I would introduce you to... Oh, we... Um, I'd like to hear what you're thinking about the animals that we see. I might ask you some questions, see if you know any answers. Um, and we'll just learn a little bit more about bugs. And hopefully by the end, you'll love them as much as I do. So Let's see. Also, um, when I was doing my little test video earlier, um, the mini beasts really weren't behaving themselves. And also I have a 10 week old baby who might start crying. So we might have a little bit of chaos, but we will manage it if we do. So uh, I have one of them perched over here. I've got my laptop on an ironing board, um, really technical uh, stand, and one of them has just gone under the ironing board. So I'm going to try and get it now, try and not get bitten um, or scratched or hurt in the process. And let's see if anybody knows what this mini beast is. It's actually not a very mini beast. All right. It's quite a big beast. Isn't she beautiful? Does anybody know what she is? So she um she doesn't quite look like the rest of the mini beasts in her family. She is from the family of stick insects. Now most stick insects look like sticks, don't they? Um, does anybody know what type of stick insect she is? Not a praying mantis, no. Um, so I've already told you she's a stick insect. She is a type of giant stick insect called a jungle nymph. Um, a jungle nymph stick insect from Malaysia. Now she's really, really cool. If you, I don't know how good quality the image is. 
probably not very good because I live in the middle of nowhere and our internet connection is pretty rubbish. Um, but I will try and get you a close up if I can. So can you see, I don't know if the quality is good enough, but she has this amazing, amazing camouflage on her back where these little things here, they look like leaves. They're actually her wings. Um, now, she is a big, big, heavy insect. In fact, she's probably the heaviest insect in the world. Um, there's a bit of a debate. It could be a Goliath beetle. Um, it could be some, some cave wetters from New Zealand. Um, it depends who you speak to. But she's definitely in the top three heaviest insects in the world. So those tiny, tiny little wings that look like leaves, they're not strong enough um, to fly. So now they're just used for camouflage and they look exactly like the leaves of the plants that she lives on. So she's got some really, really good camouflage, like all of the, uh, the insects in her family, the stick insect family. Now, most of them look like sticks. She's bright green and she's bright green to camouflage with the leaves. And she even has these little wings that look like leaves. We live in the middle of nowhere too. <laughs> Uh, you can hear me well. Well, that's that's one good thing. So this stick insect, she is huge and she has tiny, tiny little wings. Now that can make uh, life a little bit difficult for her um, when it came to finding a mate, if she can't fly around to find one. But luckily, oh, sorry, honey. Now they also do that, they drop um, off trees and things when they feel threatened. So what they can do is they can just drop out of the sky and fall to the floor. Um, that's part of evading predation. Anyway, so what I was gonna say is the males look completely different. They actually do look quite like sticks um, and they have amazing big wings that allow them to fly from female to female. They look completely different. I wish I had one, but I don't have one to show you anyway. Um, so I wanted to talk to you about her defense. The first thing that she uses for defense is hiding. She's bright green, she has these wings that look like leaves and um, they allow her to, to hide away and hopefully predators won't see her. But if predators do see her, do they hurt themselves when they fall? No. So uh, does anybody know what so sort of skeleton an insect has? They have a special type of skeleton. Now vertebrates they have their skeletons on the inside of their body and they're quite breakable, really. Um, whereas invertebrates, which is what insects are, they don't have skeletons on the inside of their body. They have something called an exoskeleton. Yes, exactly right, exoskeleton. Good, lots of people getting that right. And that is on the outside of their body and it's really, really good at protecting them, firstly from falls. In some cases, um, in some of the big armoured beetles and things like that, it can even, or cockroaches are a really good example, it can even withstand really strong pressure from some of the predators that want to eat them. So it's a real protective mechanism. So no, they protect themselves um, when they fall they don't get hurt, which is amazing because if we fell the same distance, um, sort of if a, if a human fell that far, we'd get broken arms, broken legs. We would not be in a very good way. Luckily, they have protective exoskeletons to look after them. Um, thank you for that excellent question. Cool. Um, yeah, so first of all, she, she hides. She sits on a leaf and she hides so nobody can see her. But if somebody does spot her, she has another technique to defend herself. Now, if the, um, the connection's not very good, you're probably not gonna see this detail very well. So I will try and describe it to you. Oh, she was about to use it then. Please don't scratch me. So I don't know if you can see this, but I'll try and hold her really, really still. So on the back, on her back legs, she has, um, these really, really sharp spines. Can you see those? And if she's attacked, she will stand on her front four legs because like all insects, she has six legs. She'll stand on these front four, lift these up in the air and she scratches the face. Oh, she's gone for a jump again. She scratches the face of what's trying to attack her 
And I can tell you, they're really, really, really sharp. And if you're a predator that's trying to eat her, you're going to put your face really in close um, to bite her. And then you could get scratched in the eye. That could even blind you. So she has plenty of defensive techniques up her sleeve. Now, some mini beasts, um, they just use the camouflage or they they just use um, some sort of defensive technique, like, like having sharp uh, legs to scratch an attacker. Um, but some of them use multiple of these. So she is not a predator. She's only prey. Um, she has to hide away from things that are trying to eat her. But now what I'm going to show you is a mini beast that is a predator. It preys on other mini beasts. So last time I saw her, she was on the blind behind me. So let me just go and check if she's still there. <laughs> Hello. You're gonna come with me. You're gonna come and meet some friends. Okay, right. So, who knows what this one is? Somebody already said it earlier when we were looking at the praying mantis, who was a stick insect. They thought that she might be a praying mantis. Well, this one actually is a praying mantis. You can see from these legs at the front here, which are called her raptorial arms. Now her raptorial arms are used for hunting. I have, so where did I, I had a really good image, oh yeah. So let me see if you can see this. Yes, peacock praying mantis, excellent. Whoever said that, super knowledge. Um, so I don't know if you can see that, but in the middle there, this here, is a, a praying mantis raptorial arm. Now it looks a lot like that back leg of the jungle nymph that we were looking at just now. But instead of using that to defend herself, although she does sometimes do that, when I got her out of her cage earlier, she gave me a little scratch. Um, she mainly uses those raptorial arms for catching her prey. She's amazing at catching prey. Um, probably I would say, in the whole of the animal kingdom, yeah, the second best hunter. So I think all of the best hunters um, are invertebrates. The very, 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 very best hunter, I would say, is the dragonfly, which can fly forwards, backwards, hover. It can fly so fast and it can grab things mid-flight, other flying insects, absolutely incredible. Lions, rubbish. Cheetahs, rubbish. Dragonflies and praying mantis, absolutely incredible hunters. What is your favourite praying mantis? Mine is the orchid. Olivia, hi. Well, orchid mantises are really beautiful, aren't they? Orchid mantises, they sit on plants and pretend to be flowers. And then when other mini beasts crawl up to drink the nectar from that flower, they're caught by the raptorial arms at the front of their bodies. So like I was saying, oh yeah, the question was, what's my favourite mantis? Oh, I do quite like the peacock mantis. Um, orchid mantis. Let me think about that and I'll get back to you. So one thing they can use those raptorial arms for is, um, is, is scratching someone who's trying to attack them. But that isn't their main use. Their main use is snatching insects from the middle of the air. And they are brilliant at doing that. You can see they have these huge, huge, huge eyes. And just like us, they can see in 3D. So not many insects can do this, but a mantis can pinpoint the exact point in the air, in the space around her, where a flying insect is and grab it out of the air. It's absolutely incredible. And someone's asked, what do they like to eat and catch? Well, ideally it's something that moves um, quite obviously and quite fast so that they can, first of all, they spot it with their eyes and you really see that they will turn their head, focus on, on a flying insect, follow it for a bit and then snatch it out of the air. And they are really, really good at doing this. Um, way better, like I said, than, than lots of big mammals that hunt. Um, so the type of things that they like to eat um, often flies. In captivity, you'll find that a lot of mantis get fed on crickets um, because that is the main insect that's used as a, as a food stuff for, for mantises. Um, but in the wild, really, it could be anything that's moving fast. Um, oh, do you see that? She just flew. Um, 
So thank you for that question, Harper. Basically, they can eat, I'd say she could eat anything up to about that size, a mini beast that size. Um, and what they do is they grab them with these raptorial arms. They hold them really, really, really tight and then eat them alive, which, I mean, it's a little bit gruesome, but the animal world is a bit gruesome, isn't it? And it's the circle of life. And um, it's quite fascinating, if a little bit, a little bit gross. Um, so, so she's a really good predator. And she has those raptorial arms that she uses for that. How can you tell a male from a female? Questions just come in. Um, that's a really good question. For all mantis, it's to do with, so this part of their body here is called the abdomen. An insect's body is made up of three parts, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. And praying mantises have different numbers of segments on their abdomen, depending on whether they're a male or a female. Um, so a male will have, uh, eight and a female will have six. Is it that way around? I think it's that way around. My my dad will confirm that, I'm sure. Um, and I will let you know later. I think it's, oh, well, I could just count hers. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so six. Six for a female. Um, what was I saying? Yes, so she uses the raptorial arms for snatching things from the air. But what about if something wants to eat her? Now, this is why I love the peacock mantis, because she has a really, really cool way of defense, defending herself. Um, she puts on quite an impressive show. Now, because she's used to being handled, she's probably not going to do it right now. Um, she did do it earlier. And if any of you saw Lizzie's stories, you will have seen that she put out her wings and they had this incredible pattern, um, which gives them their name, the peacock mantis, which looked like it had an eye in the middle. Now, lots of um, lots of mini beasts use this technique. So this is a page from one of my books on eye spots. This one here, this is the praying mantis. I don't know how well you can see that, but lots of other mini beasts use that technique. So here's an owl butterfly, um, and that's a peacock Katie did. Now, the reason that they have these, uh, these eye spots on their wings is to trick predators into thinking that they're a bigger animal than they are. So a bird, for example, that would, would fly along and, and see the peacock mantis and think it looks like a tasty snack, um, they when the peacock mantis puts out these eye spots, it would suddenly think, oh, actually, you're not a tasty little mantis after all. You're a big, scary bird, um, and I can't eat something that big at all. I better get away. And the peacock mantis lives to fight another day. So it's a really clever way of defending yourself. And lots of different animals use this. A lot of butterflies and moths use it, um, but also this peacock Katie did here uses it as well. I've just seen that we have a question from Natasha. How many insects have I got in my room? Um, right now, I have those two that I just showed you. Um, and actually, I have a couple of things that aren't insects. So the things that define insects are those three body parts that we talked, oh my goodness, we're running out of time. Those three body parts that we talked about before, the head, thorax, and abdomen, um, and six legs. And I have something else here that has even more than six legs. It has eight legs. What type of animals have more than eight legs? Arachnids. Now we only have two minutes left. Um, so I will just quickly show you an arachnid before we go. I hope you're not scared. It's very cool. Where's it gone? <laughs> Oh no, it is in there. <sighs> now this weird and wonderful creature, this is a vinegaroon. A vinegaroon! It gets that name because it sprays vinegar out of this long tail at the back and well it isn't actually vinegar it's an acid that it sprays in the eyes of its predators to deter it and like I said it's got eight legs it's an arachnid so these long whip things at the front here they're its front legs these ones here they're not its legs they're its mouth parts but these front ones it uses for sensing its way in the dark <gasps> really cool 
Okay, I'm going to answer this last question and then I'm going to have to go because I have rambled and rambled for the full 20 minutes already. So let's see what this... Do insects live for a long time compared to other animals? Well, it really depends which other animals you're comparing them to. Um, because obviously some, some animals live a really short amount of time and some of them can live for hundreds of years. If you think about a tortoise, um, it lives even much longer than we do. So compared to other animals, some insects have a really, really, really short life. Um, some uh, tarantulas can live for 20 years. So some of them could have a life longer than your dog. Um, some of them live their life in different stages. So something like mm, lo lots of beetles, for example, um, they'll live most of their life underground as a beetle grub. Um, and then the stage that we usually see them at is the beetle stage. And sometimes they can only last in that stage for a couple of weeks. Um, but they've lived for years underground as grubs. Where does the vinegaroon live? Um, so let me just finish that question. Uh, so some of them live for days. Some of them live for years. Just like other animals, there is a huge wide span of how long insects and arachnids. And you get back in your cage, mister. Uh, other animals live. Where does the vinegaroon live? It is very scary. You don't need to be scared of it. Uh, it can't do anything to hurt you, apart from maybe if you had it right close to your eyes and it sprayed vinegar in, it would hurt a little bit. Um, it's actually one of the friendliest arachnids that there are, uh, much friendlier than, say, a scorpion or a tarantula. But again, they don't have to be that scary if you treat them with respect. Where do they live? Um, they live, some of them live in Asia, some of them live in America. Um, they live all over the place, but mainly in tropical places because um, they have to stay quite warm. I have to keep them warm so that they survive. Um, your mum held a rose-haired tarantula. Well, that is very, very brave and also very cool. So I think we will have to end there because I'm already two minutes over. Um, but thank you so much for joining into my live lesson and meeting some of my animals and asking me some cool questions. Hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about them. Jess, where can people buy your books? Um, well, I guess at the moment, everything has to be online. Um, so most online bookstores should have most of them. Um, let me just tell you quickly uh, which ones are about bugs. So there's Mini Beast with Jess French. That's about bugs. This is my new one, which is beautiful. Um, all sorts of information about different bugs. I can say it's beautiful because I didn't draw it. That's, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm not saying I did beautiful drawing. Um, this one is the Book of Brilliant Bugs. Um, that's just come out and I'm super proud of it. Um, there's also ones about uh, things you can do outside and how we can protect the planet. That's how to help a hedgehog and protect a polar bear. This one, what a waste. That's about plastic pollution. And these beautiful ones are about extinct and endangered species. So there's saving species and lost species. Speech, species, species. Um, and they're full of really, really beautiful pictures. Thank you very, very, very much for joining in. Um, I better go put all of these people, animals, back in their cages before they escape. And uh, yes, thank you for joining me. Bye.